Good morning, you guys. Happy Thursday. I am so stoked to be doing this IG live today with um, Jill from Copper Willow. And uh, she's going to be joining us really shortly. So I'm just going to get her in here. Um, but thank you guys for jumping on. If you actually hold on one second, okay? There you guys. There you go. I um, need to get her on here, but uh, she's just needing to update her app. So before we get started with that, I thought it would be fun to just do a little bit of Q&A while we wait for Jill to be able to jump on. Um, but how are you guys doing? Where are you guys from? I am in Vancouver, Canada right now. Um, and I'm so, so blessed that so many of you guys have joined the um, the scholarship giveaway. I know some of you guys are like um, we're are already signed up for the course, and I know you're joining it. I mean, who wouldn't want an additional scholarship, right? <laughs> I totally understand it, and it's absolutely okay to join even if you have already um, signed up for the course. It's absolutely fine. I really just want to be able to spread the word. Oops. So what happens when you use a tissue box as your um, phone stand. I should get my other stand here um, to get this set up. Um, but um, anyway, so today what we're going to be talking about is we're, we are going to be uh, talking to um, Copper Willow Studio, which is my invitations printer. So I, as you guys, some, some of you guys already know, I currently, I don't actually print most of my invitations in-house. So I do all of the design I and I um, plan everything out, but then the printing and production part I actually outsource because I just don't have capacity to be doing all of it. Thank you guys. So many of you are joining in from Asia, which is great. Thank you so much. Oh, here, Copper Will is going to be able to. I'm um, really excited to have her here. Um, but yeah, I know Asia is probably midnight. Oh, there you go. Here you are. Hey, Jill. <laughs> Hi. I did update my app, apparently. <laughs> I it's so funny because I was. How are you? Trying to go live, and he's like, "Copper Willow must update their app before." So I know, like, <laughs> okay. like, hold on a second. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you, had to, you had to vamp a little. You did well. <laughs> well, I'm glad that How got sorted out. I'm good. I'm happy. Yes. All right, we're all good. <laughs> Yeah, so Jill, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you currently are. You look like you're in the studio. I'm, I'm in the studio. I've got, I'm sitting in front of one of the machines. So uh, it's early, I mean, well, early-ish. So we, we usually start work around like 10 and so. So it's a little quiet in here right now, which is nice. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're in Southern California. And I ship to all over the country and Canada, of course. And um, we do everything in-house. So in our warehouse here, we have about a 3,000-square-foot warehouse with uh, office space and assembly room. And then in the warehouse, we've got all of our machines for letterpress, foil, finishing, um, all of our stocking for envelopes and paper and cutting and you name it. So all right here. That's so awesome. I mean... Did you actually start off doing all of this in-house initially, or was there like something you started off with? Um, no, we actually started, I've been doing this for almost 15 years, and we actually started doing design only. Okay. And I joke with other people when I talk about this and say, if you had told myself 15 years ago, oh, you're going to be a printer, I would laugh at you. So I was like, that's I don't want to be a printer. I'm a designer. <laughs> well, we started out designing and ended up discovering through working with other people um, that there was a certain way we liked things done. And we weren't able to find that type of work ethic in some of the other printers that we were working with. We really wanted solid communication. We wanted solid um, turnarounds and the ability to really feel like we knew what was going on with our work and we didn't have to micromanage. So we started bringing machines in because we're like, well, if we can't find it somewhere else, we'll just do it ourselves. And so then about five years after that, we actually had other people come to us saying, you know, you have all these machines. Can you print for other people? And, and the first reaction was, well, that's, 
that's not really what we had in mind. <laughs> but we went ahead and um, and started doing that and took the business. Um, you know, you kind of demand and follow interest and. And I really love this path of the business. It's very rewarding. I feel like I develop a lot of really, um, you know, significant relationships where we are helping each other grow each other's businesses. I care about what happens with the designers because your success helps our success and vice versa. So it's been a nice growth process from something that we weren't really anticipating doing to now something that we do full time and we have such great resources and it's yes, it's it's a very enjoyable last fifteen years to this point. So that's awesome. And I mean, I've loved working with you all these years. So I, you know, it's been so nice to have somebody in the industry that also, you know, understands the actual invitation design process. So you understand like the rush or why things, what color or like the papers and the ribbons and things like that. I mean, I gained a lot of my knowledge from, you know, just working with you all these years too. So I, I really appreciate all that, all that. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you guys, if you have any. To... Oh. About... oh, sorry. There's just a little bit of a lag here. Are you okay? There you go. You were saying? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> designer that is a perspective that we're able to bring when we work with other designers to help them with their artwork and and really like have a, a team situation yeah so um by the way you guys if you have any questions at all about um printing or uh to or to jill in particular about like the whole you know wholesale um invitation process you can put it in the comments below and we'd love to <clears throat> chat about it so Jill, I have a question for you. This is just out mm -hmm. of curiosity. Which do you have like a favorite kind of printing? Um, I like letterpress the best. It's what I originally started <laughs> working with. Um, so it just it's like second nature. I can I can print very quickly at a standard that I'm proud of, and I worked you know hard to learn. Um, I would say it's something that is kind of timeless. So I don't think it will ever really go in another fashion like some other printing processes do, at least not anymore. It was something that kind of fell out of fashion in probably the 80s. If you like look into history of letterpress, a lot of the machines actually went out of printing in the 80s when processes like thermography became really popular because it was cheaper and it was fast. And a lot of the machines um, dispersed to different countries got tossed in people's barns and their basements and so on. So if you ever um, come across uh, an old machine, there's lots of people that are eager to get them restarted and clean them up and back into commission. And, and it's become such a popular, um, such a popular art. And I think it's great to work with it every day. It's very, it's very satisfying. So I, I like that the best. There's so much tactile, um, you know, with the texture and the color and the plushness of all sorts of papers you can print with, um, to be able to take something that's just a flat printout from a computer print and say, okay, I'm going to make this. Um, the end result is so transformative. It's, it's lovely. Yeah, no, I, I love letterpress. And I still remember my very first letterpress project with you too. Cause I'm just like, this is my very first one. And you can like smell the paper <laughs> and like touch everything. <laughs> I know. Like a yeah, I have a lot of yeah, I have a lot of designers that come to me and they're like, I'm not necessarily, I'm not there yet. I, I'm doing mostly this or that, but I, I want to do letterpress and I'm going to get to letterpress. And I'm like, you know what, you will, because it's what you put out there, what you want to do. If you make those samples, you know, put out into the world what you want to do, and then other people will see it and you will start working doing what you want to do. So now it's, it's so popular to do letterpress. Foil is equally popular. If, if you had said, oh, pop, you know, foil would be this popular like 10 years ago even, I, that would have been silly. I, I thought like foil was, was basically for like accents on business cards or like on like um, a parking ticket. <laughs> but now foil is 
is the the peak. I mean, it's it's the end all to to glam and flair, and you can print on anything just like that as well. And there's so many different types of foils out there that it's really come into its own. And I love seeing the invitation and printing world kind of evolve and transform something that might have been passe or even tacky and like re reinvent it into this beautiful art form. So foil is there too. Foil has its own challenges in printing. So each form of printing is has its own um, hiccups and, and tricks. Uh, so foil can be a little tricky, but um, but they're they're beautiful art forms and I hope that everybody has a chance to work with them. Mm -hmm. A Taylor Design Studio here is asking as a printer, what do you expect designers to know when they ask you to print projects for them? Um, we work with a lot of designers of all different skill levels. So we have some come to us. Establish themselves with, and they're not necessarily very experienced and that's totally fine. I think it's great to make that leap. I think it's great to dive in and learn. Um, your basics, you really do need to know how to set up a file. So if you work with Illustrator or InDesign, uh, those are preferable. Being able to vectorize your artwork. Um, I know, Carla, you have some of this stuff in your course, which is um, really valuable from taking it from the proof setup to then making it, making sure it's print ready. And those are things that your printer can help you with. So if you're not sure what is a good line weight, what is, um, you know, how small can you print? Those are all things that are pretty common across the board and anybody can share with you that, that sort of information. And, and that's, that's a good place to start. Understand how to take your design to prepping your file. A lot of printers, like myself, I don't even require color separation. You can send me your finished proof, and I do that work for you. Um, but it, it will depend on who you work with. Past that, mm, understanding the, the basics of how letterpress differs from foil, differs from digital, and what papers those can print on um, is good information. I would hate for yeah. a designer to get all the way through their proofing to the end and send it to a printer and then say, you know what, we can't digitally print on that paper. And then you have to go back to your client and change their plan. <clears throat> so um, even if there's a printer that you work with where you can take your in-process proof and show it to them in process and say, hey, before we finalize this, is this even possible? And your printer can say yes or no. And it saves you that back and forth. Um, it saves you from telling your client that, you know, that you weren't, you didn't know exactly what, what was supposed to happen. <laughs> so that kind of collaboration with a printer, I think is very valuable. It helps us so that we're not having work sent to us that we can't print or that isn't feasible. And it helps the designer um, from not going down that path um, and then having to take steps backwards. <clears throat> yeah. And especially because these days, you know, like sometimes we see pictures on Pinterest and you're like, how did they do that? And I just want to replicate that. And but but the printing process is different, like or you can possibly do them, you know, for styled photo shoots, but <coughs> them in real. Well, and that, and that you bring up a good point about styled photo shoots. Um, You'll find a lot of people do styled photo shoots of a fantasy invitation that you never actually want to make in bulk. Yes. So don't make a styled shoot invitation that you never want to print again because <laughs> somebody will see it on Pinterest somewhere and they'll be like, I want that. And they'll be like, oh, shoot, now I got to make it again. <laughs> Except now I got to make 200 of them. <gasps> so, so yes, put out into the world what you want, what you want to design, what you're proud of, but also what you actually really want to make. <laughs> Yeah, Winkle and Toast is listening to us today. She says she loves my shirt. And this is a shirt I bought because it's a, yes. it matches a, I, I bought a similar one for my kid and I, I bought the youth large one. <laughs> <This, laughs> oh, so you have a mommy and me. That's cute. Yeah. I know. I'm we'll like, need a picture. This is an adult. I'm just so sad. So I'm like, I was like hoping I could fit into a 12 to 14 year old shirt. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Blissful Calligraphy is asking for starting out, what machines do you think we should invest in? Um, if you're looking to print, I would highly say don't just buy a machine and dive in. I know that there are there are some pretty good courses online. I know that Swell Press just launched a really comprehensive course on printing. I don't think she goes into foil. I think it's mostly focused on Letter letterpress. I will tell you that letterpress is not without its dangers. So you can get your hand caught in a letterpress and lose a finger, for example. And it happened to my former business partner. I know other people that it has happened to. Um, I will say that it's worth the time and the care, but it should not be rushed. Um, if it's something that you want to buy, um, the, let's see, here, I'll spin, let's spin around here. Can I turn this around? Oh, I can. Okay. Okay. So this is, this is called a Chandler and Price. So it's, a, it's my little guy. So this one's only an eight, eight by 12 and they go off of the size of the chase. So this is called a chase. You know, similar to your mm -hmm. son. <laughs> so this is a chase. Yeah, this is your print area here. So it's, it's called an 8 by 12 because this is 8 inches by 12 inches. So these little guys are great. Um, they do take a footprint. Like I said, I have like a 3,000 square foot studio. So I've got several machines in here. So I've got press, press, foil. And then I've got more presses on the other side with cutters. So not everybody has that space, of course. But if you're able to carve out a footprint, this is like, I don't know, maybe like a five by three, like you could fit this in a garage. Um, it also takes regular electricity, which is something that everybody needs to look into. Um, otherwise, it's just run by, they used to be run by a treadle, which doesn't exist in a lot of machines anymore. So there used to be one here. Um, some don't even have a brake. So like that one doesn't have a brake, but this one does have a brake right here. That's a brake. So if anybody were to look into buying one, I would recommend this kind, but to take it slow because it's, it's not 100%, you know, risk-free. So when you turn it on, so it opens and closes like this, and you don't want your hands, you don't want your hands in this. So you have to work on getting a rhythm to applying the paper. So I pulled out some paper to be able to show a print. And I've been doing this enough Ooh. to do this with one hand. So cool. Don't just I know. don't, don't just do at this at home. <laughs> yeah, so don't do yeah. This at so home. yeah, just not just do this. At home. So if you can get something that's got, I think I can show it down there. I have a variable speed okay, yeah. motor. Slow it down. So you put the paper in like that. And because I don't have two hands, this is the on and off lever over here. You put it on lever, off, and then I have, I don't know if I can get good, good shadow in here. So it's just palm trees oh. on a, on a two ply wild paper. So I have this one already set up with no rollers because uh, then I just use this one exclusively for blind printing. But this is one of my first presses and you can also get more automated machines, but this one's very user friendly because it's small enough. Um, I can slow it down if I were first learn if I was first learning. Um, it doesn't take special electricity, and everything is fairly accessible in terms of materials. So that would be that would be a cool one to start with. Yeah. Okay. I hope that helped. <laughs> it, I, I mean it, that. that <laughs> If you want to go into printing, right? Like, I mean, some of you guys right. as I earlier, I actually don't do the printing just because it is a whole new beast, like a different skill set. Right. I don't cover how to print things actually in my course. Like I right. tell them this is how you set it up for <clears throat> all the different kinds of printing. Because like you said, like, you know, Swell Press also has this course right now that talks all right. about like the mechanics. I could imagine that the learning process doesn't <clears throat> stop there own a machine and practice yeah. and play with it, learn it it could probably take a, a year to probably really get a hang of all the nuances yeah, it, of it, it eventually it would take a I little guess. while well and it brings up a good point yeah um you and i were talking about this when we were working on your course material the other day and when you're deciding whether you want to design or print which was that kind of thing i did several years ago when i was like oh i'm not going to print and then i ended up printing 
Um, you have to decide <laughs> what you're good at, what you specifically want to spend your time on and what you have that's special to you that, that you can put out there. So if you are going to print, that is going to take away time from what you do specifically. So if it's a good investment in your time to expand your business in that way, and that makes sense for you to spend time on printing, then, then go for it. For a lot of designers who are, you know, offer a specific set of calligraphy, like yours, Carla, yours is very specific. It's in demand. People come to you specifically for that look. It wouldn't be good time economy for you to spend time on something other people can do for you. Whereas other people cannot necessarily do your design. Um, there are other designers that have that same thing. You have a specific style or a watercolor artist. Nobody can do, um, nobody can do your artwork. So the time mm -hmm. that you are printing instead, you're not doing your artwork. You're not promoting your business. So if that's the trade-off, I mean, that's going to be the trade-off. So you have to decide, is that worth it? Um, does that build the business you were hoping to build is the only thing. Yeah. And, and if, if you, have, you like, don't want to do that, if you just want to bring. Right. Right. Cause it is, it's a lot of manual labor. Like being a printer is a lot of mm -hmm. time on your feet. It's a lot of manual labor. Um, my kids are old enough. They are 10 and 13. And while they're learning from home right now, they'll be back to school in the fall. And this is what I do during my day. And when they are off to college and, you know, several years from now, this will, you know, this is what my, I've worked on. This is my life's work. So when you're looking at what you're doing with your time, you know, does it, uh, does it give you the time to spend with your family, with your kids? Um, you know, does it give you something that you feel proud about? Don't dive into something unless that's really what, where you want to take your business would be my, after 15 years looking back <laughs> commentary. <laughs> EB calligraphy here. How do we ensure as designers that what we see in the digital proof ends up being the actual product, given that screens may show up colors differently? Um, well, when we work with our clients, we ask that everybody hopefully owns a Pantone deck. Yeah. So I don't, let me see if I can, where do I have one of those? Let me I see. Really update. My <laughs> like I had, oh, oh, there we go. This is this is not the one that I recommend. This is the old one, but I'm gonna pull it out anyway. Okay. So a Pantone deck. I don't know if everybody's seen this, so I'm gonna just pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is my my dirty one from the press room. So the the best way to say that what you are going to get at the end is what you have been talking to your clients about is if you have a universal color system. So using a Pantone deck is the way to do it. So when I say, okay, what color do you want this to be? And I can manipulate the colors on my end. I can mix the colors in letterpress to be the right color. And then in digital, I can adjust the colors. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, this one's actually, I think a, a couple of years old. I have a newer one in the, in the digital room, but they come in, this is an uncoated deck. Does it say that on here? Yes. So uncoated. Don't get a coded one that gives you an illusion of a richer color that's actually not going to exist in letterpress. That's for offset printing. Um, there's also one that's called a color bridge. So um, let's see. <clears throat> it's a color bridge where the left side is your uncoded deck and then the right side is a YK. So if you work a lot with watercolors or digital printing, get that one. Again, it's called the color bridge. Um, so that then you can see like there are colors out there, like some shades of orange and green that just aren't possible on CMYK. So if you're printing with a digital printer that works with laser, um, toner, then, um, you'll need something like that. And that's the best way to, to match up. So Carla up in Vancouver, you know, I have printer, I have designers in New York and Florida and, you know, we will never, probably never meet and I never see their artwork in person. But they will get their art, they will get their printed pieces back looking the way they want because we are the same colors. <clears throat> yes, yes, absolutely. And I mean, there's always going to be some discrepancy, like, but that's something that you have to set up with your client, right? Like, because right. what they see on their screen will have some discrepancy, but I right. trust that you have to build with your client that 
you are doing the best you can to provide in the color palette and the tone of their color palette versus like something completely different. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely need to set up with your client a little expectations on what something looks like on the screen. Yes. Um, if, if that's not possible, we do offer and a lot of other um, printers, especially for digital, you can do printed samples. But, um, but yeah, having a little bit of color expectation with your clients and then understanding how to communicate color with the printer is important. Yeah, because like we can't just like make a sample, uh, especially for letterpress and foil, right? Like um, actually this was a question that came up right. in one of my lives as well that people were asking, <clears throat> do you prefer samples of their invitation printed out before you print the whole thing? And I say, no, I don't. We, give, we do give samples of my previous work that has like a similar color um, or set, like the envelopes, for example, but not their final artwork piece because. Right. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah. They would have to pay for the plate outright, whether they use it or not. And then yeah. you have to pay to set up the machine and run, which is effectively the same cost as running like 25. So yeah. it's, it's possible, but I, I, I wouldn't go down that path with your clients because I think it's just, it gets into expectations that are yeah. a little out of hand. <laughs> yeah. I told them too, like, I feel like it's like a call for more issues of people like, oh, there's like a slight difference in here. Or like, you know, this was printed like ever so slightly different. Um, mm -hmm. And somebody was asking here, show us the foil machine too. <laughs> oh, a foil machine? Let me see. Hold on. I think it's a mess. Hold on. <laughs> this, is, this is one of my foil machines here. So... This one here, Ugh. so I, I use this one majority of the time because it allows me to print, it's a flatbed, so then you use, um, it's two-handed too, so you can't ever get, um, you can't ever get uh, your hand smushed in here. But I've got under here, I've got a that's already attached, and then the foil comes, starts from here and then goes across. And then the paper feeds here. And so this allows me to print all the handmade papers, um, all the odd shaped items, um, especially like bulky handmade envelopes, that kind of thing. So that's, this is the, my foil printer of choice. You can also get foil printers that are clamshell, just like the letterpress. And you can also get um, uh, foil print, foil machines that are like, like the automated ones, like the Heidelberg and, and so on like that. So, so that's, that's my, that's my foil machine. Oh, I had a plate. I'm going to show you guys foil plates. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. So, so oh, these we, were, we, we annually here. take the foil is, off or no? Hold on. Here's your, yeah. here's one of Carla's jobs. So this is for a bride of hers. So oh, yeah. it's, it's like a, it's like a quarter inch magnesium. You can also get copper ones. Um, I use copper ones to print on like um, vellum, acrylic, that kind of thing, because it needs a special, it needs extra hot plates oh. and copper gets hotter. So that's that. And then what were you saying? I was saying, do you have to manually take the foil out or does the machine do that for you? No, it, it the, the, it auto feeds the foil. Um, I manually place the paper, um, but once the foil's in there, it's on a roll, and then it, it pulls it across every time. Yeah. Um, Taylor Design Studio is asking, as far as pricing, does the designer pay the printer and invoice the client, or does the client pay the printer directly? Um, it depends on if you want to make a profit off of the printing. So if you are set, if you're, if you are wanting to, this is kind of a long question, a long answer. Um, if you, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the best way to approach it. You can have two ways of approaching your business. You can be design only, in which case you're doing a service and you don't have to pay tax. If you get into wanting to make a profit off of the goods so that you are buying it from the printer and then you're reselling it and you should be paying resale tax, um, you can do that. And therefore then you would pay the printer, your client pays you, ideally you're marking it up like double at least. And so then you make it, I think that personally is worth it 
to make the profit. Some people don't want to deal with the tax. They just don't want to deal with any of that. They charge their design and then they extend the invoice to their, um, to the, the end client. But I will tell you that the way that we work with and we give a discount, um, a pretty strong discount so that you are able to resell it to your end client. Um, we don't want you just pay, having them pay the bill and you don't make anything. It's worth the time for you um, to to set up the business so that you can make the profit on that. Um, because without your um, without your connection and your time working with your printer, your client wouldn't have printed goods. So you should be making money off of that um, if you want to go that path. I hope that yes. helps. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I mean, I think for the most part, people do do that. I think like they do d the markup versus like sending that invoice across as well. Um, because yeah, I know some again, people I know. Yeah, I know some people don't, some people which is fine. They just don't want to deal with the resale. Um, but I, I think you should, I think everybody should make money off of it. So I think it's worth it worth the time to set it up. Yeah. <clears throat> Good to know. And um Sorry, as someone was also asking, what is the normal turnaround time after sending things to the printer? Um, that'll vary based on the printer. So right now, I will tell you that in the print and paper world, things are very busy. Yeah. And as I'm sure all the designers are very busy right now. Um, everybody from 2020 that postponed is now getting married in 2021, in addition to everybody who was already getting married in 2021. In 2020, yep. everybody was at a standstill, so nobody was making paper and nobody was making materials. And now everybody's back ordered and out of stuff. So the busyness and the turnaround times right now, I would say, are an enigma. We try and tell our, um, our designers that they can expect um, a 7 to 10 business day turnaround. So that's usually anywhere from uh, a week or week and a half to two weeks. Um, if it would take any longer than that, it would purely because the volume of the job. <clears throat> but I would say that that's a reasonable expectation. And I find most people are within the two week range, yeah. right? I only put that out there because if you're going to try and look into printers and materials right now, you might hit a different turnaround because yeah. everything is, is kind of busy and backed up. Um, but that's the goal. I think that's a reasonable expectation. Yeah, and I mean, that's also another thing I do talk about in the course is that even though the printer could possibly take a shorter time to do it, you still want to have a buffer just in case, you know, things get delayed or like, for example, right now there's a huge paper shortage. Um, and so, <clears throat> yeah. you know, we've had to, either, like, we're on ship to arrive or like paper is out of stock. We have to rejig the color situation or like we're sourcing paper from multiple places and shipping has always been taking longer since covid right yeah yeah I'm yeah things are things are back ordered shipping's taking longer a lot of companies are understaffed because they had to lay off in 2020 and now they're trying to get staff um back again and it's not as easy as you know people it takes training and uh, so, yeah, it's it's been interesting this year <laughs> in a way that I'm not sure everybody I'm not sure everybody was anticipating the the difference of 2021 to 2020. Last year, there was like no business this year. There's so much business that people can't keep up with it and paper is out. So it's it's interesting if you're starting your business this year. I think it's a great time to do it, to be honest, because there's a lot of people <laughs> There's a lot of people celebrating, getting married, and having events, and um, and I say go for it. <laughs> I know. I was just saying, like, it's a good time that I'm launching this course now because if I launched it last year, first maybe nobody would have even afford it, and then by the time they actually do it, they're like, okay, wait, hold on a second. Um, there's nobody getting married. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time for it. Yes. Yeah, now it's a. Last year was a good time for reinvention or thinking about doing new things. And this year is the time to really do it. So yeah. I hope that everybody can dive in and, and, and find a good printer. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Oh yeah. Pamela art calligraphy is just asking her name. Her business name is called copper willow. I'll, I, I'll, I'll for sure put it in the replay anyway. So 
just in case. Um, going back to the oh, color bridge. I thought you were saying her business name is Copper Willow. I was like, it is? <laughs> Um, going back to the color bridge Pantone cards, as a watercolor artist, which side, coated or uncoated, will be the way it looks like in real life? Uncoated, right? Okay, so the the color bridge, maybe I should go get it. We'll go get it. Hold on. The color bridge yeah. itself is not a coated, uncoated. It's actually a Pantone uncoated on the left, and then on the right is its translation for... CMYK, like what's achievable in CMYK. Let me see here. I think I have it. I yeah. I, I, okay. Two panels, right? Two, one on each side. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like this. So, like, let's say I wanted to actually grade orange. So, like, let's say I spec one fifty. Or 150, I would then come back to you as the printer and say, okay, this is probably how it's going to turn out. Are you okay with that? So you can see how this is more like a bright solid orange. And then this is kind of more like a yeah. pumpkin spice. So it's not, not every color that comes as a pure tone is going to be achievable in the CMYK. But this is a good guide so that you can kind of adjust that expectation with your client too. So if your client asks for 150 for letterpress and then they want to do digital for their other pieces and expect all their digital pieces to also be, oops, wrong color, but to, to be the, the companion to that, you can say, well, you know, maybe we should choose a different color because this is probably more how your color is going to print over here. Um, yes. If you wanted it to be this pure, you have to go with offset. So offset is a different kind of, of printing process that works with pure pigment like this, just like letterpress. So when I get a letterpress color mixed or I look um, to mix a letterpress color, I do look at this, this color here. This is what's achievable. This is what's achievable in CMYK on the right. Digital printing. For digital printing, yeah, which is what most people offer for um, for flat printing is digital print. So if you're doing your, like, for example, even in your home office, let's say you decide you wanted to address your client's envelopes and you got yourself a little HP or something, um, this is a good reference to know that you're not going to be able to just churn this color out of your home printer. It's going to look more like this. Or even in ink in general. Does it take a long time to match yeah, color? So this is color bridge. Um, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. My, my um, this is the, our digital printer looks like this. So it's a really big digital printer with a stand feeder and stuff like that. So um, in, in the computer, I have RIP software that I can do all my color adjustments too. So I can actually put Pantones into it, but then I usually have to go in and tweak it and we can print. When we have a color, this is how we tweak it. We print out sheets like this and then select a color that looks okay. closest to what we want. So like, let's say if we were starting with the one in the middle, but it didn't really match the Pantone requested, then we can adjust either way like that. <laughs> I'm so amused because I mean, every single time I <laughs> something, it's usually already on par, but I don't get to see the behind the scenes here, you know, like the, how much. Yeah, no, there's usually, been a, colors cause yeah, there's usually been a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, it takes me a long time to mix ink sometimes when I'm doing my calligraphy because the ink color, when I mix it versus when it dries, it looks different. Is that the same thing as well with like letterpress, like ink? No, no. I mean, the can will look completely different. So if you were to open a can of ink, right. like a, something that's yellow actually might look dark green in the can. But when you put it on and it distributes and thins, it's actually much lighter. Um, and then it dries. It should dry completely. Um, there shouldn't be rub off or any, any issues like that with letterpress. Um, it just soaks straight into the paper. It's best on uncoated papers. So if you are looking at... Um, let's see, a, a star dream or something like that that's more coated, that wouldn't be ideal for letterpress. It doesn't really soak in, so you won't get your rich tone, and then um, it'll take a little bit longer to dry. 
Oh, interesting. Um, Kunyawan is just asking you for a beginner, what's the process of becoming a designer and reseller when we don't know the printing price? So I think it'll probably be good to ex explain kind of like how does one, you know, start printing with you, I guess, like how that way you can get, they can get to <clears throat> prices, I guess, right? Okay, yes, to no prices. Um, there are some printers that work entirely by quote. Um, we don't do that just because with the volume of work that we take in, um, it's just easier and more time effective for us to enable our designers to print to price on their own. So we have a multi-page, a multi-tabbed Excel that has all of the pricing already in it. So if anybody did want to see our pricing, um, it's not proprietary to the point where we won't share it, but we do request that everybody be an established business. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you've had any business yet. Just take the step to go and get your business license. And then you can fill out our application and send it to us. Um, the only reason we do that is because we don't extend wholesale pricing to one time people printing like their own wedding invitations. Um, the idea is that we're helping other businesses set up their business. So right. um, once the, yeah, once the application is filled out, you just email it in and that's free. We actually have two different account types. We have a standard and a premium and the standard is 30% off of the grid. The grid is entirely retail. So you can, it's kind of a, a good guide to see what you should be charging your end client or, or a good base to start and then mark up from there. And then um, the premium account is 40% off and we do require a purchase of a materials kit, which has all of our, yeah, you've got one. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have a really old one actually. Um, but, uh, but it, we require that purchase um, so that you have all of our house colors. So it's all of our house papers, all of our house letterpress colors, all of our, foil colors, samples of digital printing and finishing and duplexing and edging and all sorts of stuff. So it becomes a nice companion to when you're actually ordering with your client. You can even take it to your meeting and pull out samples and, and go through um, with them all of the decision making and build up your invitations. So that gets you 40% off the retail grid. And then um, and that's it. I mean, once you send in the application, you can start with the standard account just to see pricing. And anybody can anybody can do that. Um, as far as other printers, I mean, ask if they have the similar kind of thing. See if they have any kind of basic pricing that that they can that you can use. Um, if not, I would send over like mock up a few a few variations of a project and send it to them and ask for pricing and um, see if they can at least quote for you five or six jobs so that you see where things land. Um, depending on how prolific you are, you can go quote by quote. You don't have to go off of a grid, um, especially if you're giving yourself enough lead time and you're able to have a responsive printer who can quote you and then you can get back to your client in a reasonable amount of time. Um, yeah, you can go off of either way. It's just, I, I like our designers to be independent so that you can make them. Absolutely. Pamela was just asking where to get um, those uh, Pantone guides. I mean, I've just been getting them from Amazon. I'm sure you could probably go on Pantone.com and order it there too. Yeah, you can. Um, I want to say, depending on which one you want. So if you want the bridge, you need to just order it off of yeah Amazon or Pantone itself sells them online. Um, if you want just the uncoded guide, the uncoded and the coded are actually sold in a pair and the, the coded is used by like interior designers um, or offset printers, people who actually will get a coded portion. And sometimes I find that there's more people that need that than, than that need the uncoded. And you can actually then go on eBay and buy the uncoded rejects from the people who bought <laughs> the pair and only one of the coded. That's how I got my very first one is I bought somebody's reject uncoded deck so try that i don't know if that exists anymore but you can definitely get it off of the pantone site or Am i guess amazon you got yeah. yours on amazon it's so funny that you talk about coded because so a lot of my packaging printers are out in asia and they just don't <laughs> use that they don't use the uncoded book because because they do more offset printing right they're 
doing a lot of bulk printing and that's why they wanted the coded right. version so i'm always like googling like pantone equivalent of this number <laughs> like pantone coded version um, mm -hmm. i really need to get myself a coded book because yeah i just get asked this question most, well, most of the coded yeah some some of the code like the actual coded of the uncoded is the exact same but there are other um there's other uh decks that like have a dash in them, like they'll start with P something dash something something. A lot of those are coded books. And again, interior designs and other people that are in color theory work with these two and they just don't need the uncoded deck. If you're if you're looking to solely spec colors for letterpress, the uncoded one is your most valuable one. And then if you are looking to do something that's letterpress and digital companion, the color bridge is the one I would invest in. Yeah. And so, so guys, the, this Pantone color thing is only for the the flat colors. So if you're looking for swatches of foil, that's different. Mm -hmm. That's metallic. So Jill has them in their sample kit because every yeah. so many shades of foil too. Like if you think about yeah. gold, there's like yellow gold. I wonder if I have warmer gold and <laughs> i mean see if i have a deck right here i'm oh, so this is my special color of gold i can yellow gold yeah, yeah yeah here we go there you go look at here's oh. here's gold <laughs> yeah there's so many yeah. shades but even when you say rose gold as you can tell there's so many different shades of copper yeah like that's ours down below the bottom right so i'm gonna go back out here champagne but it's so yeah champagne. um <laughs> of course have specialty yeah, so ones there's so also like, coming back but that depends oil company you know this one right like this mm. one is based on the oil company this is a, yeah not, this is the oil company that we order from and anybody mm -hmm. can actually order this this is um this is great western foil so if anybody wants to see the variety of foils just keep in mind not every printer is actually going to own own all of these foils so to be able to um let me make this flatter okay to be able to sorry i'm trying to do this with one hand okay so to be able to order like every single one of these and just be like i'm just gonna spec you know 142 well not every printer has that so find out maybe what they have like i have like three different golds and i've got two different coppers and a copper gold and a rose gold you know and like similarly there's all these paper or these all these oh there's a big truck out back hold on <laughs> you're gonna go back in holographic one yeah like these like here's your there's your hollow foil i'm going back inside okay i'm gonna go sit back down in the other room because a truck just came into the back alley and it's loud but this one anybody <laughs> can request this so if you cool. actually want the full guide, you can actually get it from them. They're a great company. I should get one of okay. those. I have some of our swatches. That's most of the ones I have. And then I just have um, another swatch, but it's from a different company, I think. But yeah, great Western foils. Good to know. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I like them. Amla Art is just asking here about how about like printing watercolor then into digital so when I have, when we work with watercolor artists, um, we still, we still work off of a Pantone. So we ask them to, to look at their art and just, just spot pick a couple of colors and say, okay, the leaves in, leaves in the crest should be this Pantone. Um, the floral should be in this range Pantone. And that just helps us to skew the artwork in the right direction. Because in addition to adjusting spot color, excuse me, spot colors, I can also then go in and slide the CMYK values <coughs> so that we can get um, a richer tone going more yellow or that if we need the, the whole illustration to skew more blue, we can do that. And we'll use, we'll use the Pantone then to measure and make sure yes. that we're in the right like color family. <coughs> excuse me. That makes a lot of sense. And then, do you, I mean, personally, I've been asking you to print my watercolor using Jiclay printing instead of like regular laser printing because of the quality and the range of color. Is that what you would recommend for others as well? Um, 
No, not necessarily. Um, G clay is, is really good at really soft tones. And um, I'm, I use that word because it sounds nice. It's, it's basically a very fancy inkjet. So it's water-based. <laughs> You've got water-based color <laughs> versus, versus toner-based color. So if you're looking at how water, you know, in watercolor, you can get very, like, faint, um, very faint coloring there. So similarly, so can um, your G clay slash inkjet offering. Um, that you really do need something that's a paper that can take the wet. So there's, there's a little bit of um, caveat there. Otherwise, uh, it gets very nice soft gradations, but not necessarily rich tones. So if you really want a bright water, a bright water color, and maybe you're okay with losing some of the flora of your lightest colors, I would say the vast majority of the designers actually will print um, some of their watercolors on on their on laser. It just gets a rich a richer palette. Um, and if you're ever curious about which one's best, just request a print sample. We do our print sample samples for fifteen dollars and includes a priority mailing. And we can print one on the G clay and we can print one on the laser and then you can decide which one looks best. Cool. Cool. This has been so fun, Jill. I really appreciate you like spending this time, like talking to us and like, I know you're so busy. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, do you, do you kind of work, like you said, you start at 10 and then what time do you end? Um, well, I'm here earlier than 10. Um, I have, I, I have other people come in at 10 so I can kind of get started, um, get things organized. Um, I like if my kids were in school, I would try to be done, you know, when they're done with school or activities, which would be maybe four. Um, sometimes I'll stay till five right now. I'm staying quite late because, again, it's very busy. Um, so sometimes my kids are at home and my, with my husband and I'll come back here and do some work in the evening. I do a lot of my computer communication right now at night, just because the, the day is so busy in the actual studio. So, I mean, you know, I'm, you'll get an email from me at midnight <laughs> and, and sometimes you're there. Yeah. Running back. I need tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I would say our regular business hours that we offer to people are probably more like a nine to four kind of thing. But right now it's, it's a little bit longer than that. And that's okay. That's okay. We'll, we'll get through. <laughs> and, and you have like a team that kind of helps you out through this, right? I mean, you're not printing by yourself. You've got people helping you print and different. Tasks. Well, well, we are. Yeah. Well, I used to have pre pandemic, a staff of seven. Um, and that was with a couple of printers and then people also helping in the studio because we make sure to QC, so quality control, everything. So we look through every piece one at a time after it's done printing. And then we wrap it up and label it and ship it out. Um, so I have people that work with us in QC and shipping. I have, um, they also can do the handiwork because sometimes we also line envelopes for people or tie their ribbons or so on. Um, I'm, I'm slowly getting back into shape for printing. Um, that one is a little harder to fill because, again, it takes some experience. Um, I have to train people. So my longer hours right now are due to the fact that I am doing a lot of the printing. Um, I'm excited, though. I hired somebody new yesterday. So we're going to we're going to get there. But it's it's been a little exhausting trying to I mean, everybody who's owned a business will understand that when you do it, you do it with a small group for a little while, and then you hit that growing pain, and then you have to decide, okay, is it time to hire more people? Well, I went through that years ago, but then the pandemic, <laughs> the pandemic has brought us back to that early business stage where it's like, okay, now we got to build back up again. So, um, so it's been, it's made it interesting, but, but yes, we have a lot of very good people that work here. No, I mean, I'm so, I'm always loved that I get to work with as well, aside from yourself. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, um, yeah, you'll hear other people chime in on emails. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, but anyway, I don't want to take too much more of your time. Thank you so much, Jill, for spending a time to um, chat about this. I know everybody's like really grateful for you sharing your knowledge. I'm glad that we were able to do this. Oh, good. Um, and maybe we should do another one one day. And I really want to come visit you once this pandemic is over. Yeah. I will show everybody around your studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, once I clean it. <laughs> we, want, we want it real. <laughs> oh, oh, it's it's real right now. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, you guys, as some of you are saying like, oh, am I saving this life? I will, as long as Instagram doesn't like crash on me. Because, you know, <laughs> I don't know how many yeah. times I've tried to save a life and then it'll just like disappear on me. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> oh. Well, if anybody has any questions, they're always they're always welcome to write indirectly. Our our print email is print at copperwillow.com and it's just www.copperwillow.com and there's a whole wholesale section of our website yeah. that gives some of this information with our application. Um, I'm always happy to share info whether we work together or not. So Yeah. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'll see you guys. All right. Live. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.